and welcome back to the How I Ripped Off Buffy the Vampire Slayer podcast. My name is Chip Thompson. And I'm joined, as always, by Mr. MC. That would be me. And this is Season 1 of Chip, Episode 14, mm. Pool Shark Part 2. Uh, what happened last time, MC? We found out that the episode title is every bit as clever <laughs> as we thought it would be. There is indeed a shark. It is extremely literal. <laughs> Um, as well as the shark, uh, Ridley Dudley, Dudley Ridley. Ridley. There we go. Uh, his uh, it turns out that ripping off demons uh, as a career path is not a the safest of choices, <laughs> and he needs to come up with a bunch of money quick. And it's all coming back to bite him hey! in the ass, as the uh, shark demon was in called fact called bites. Yeah. Very original name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's quite of a Marvel villain kind of name, mm. isn't it? In a way. All right, I like bites a lot more now. Um, but what was Chip's fantastic idea of, of how to help Ridley? <laughs> Robbing a bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, that Ridley was the came, thing. Yeah, and then they fought because that's how you resolve <laughs> disagreements in this world. Again, going back to the Marvel comparison, yeah, yeah a lot yeah. of the heroes will fight for stupid reasons. So I like the show even more now. Fantastic. <laughs> Do we think they're actually going to go through with the robbing of a bank? In I this? don't think so. Oh well, I mean, Ridley, Ridley either needs to get the demons off his back some other way, mm-hmm. or he needs the money. That's true. And uh, Ridley was very reluctant to accept the help from Chip. He was for reasons. Even though he went over to wake up Chip and say, "Help! <laughs> I need your help." And the Chip was like, "Okay, I'll help you." And Ridley was, Ridley was like, "No, don't help me." Yeah, that was really confusing, wasn't it? Okay, great. Well, that uh, holds us in good stead to see what's going to happen as we get into Pool Shark Part 2. Previously on Chip. Chip was alone until something from above dropped down and knocked him on the back of the head. We don't want you. The demon added. We wanted your friend. Chip looked puzzled. Why do you want Ridley? Chip asked. He owes money. To some people that would rather make an example of him than collect what is old. The blurriness quickly disappeared from Ridley's eyes and head, and he was able to see where he was. Tied to a large pole somewhere in the docks on a pier. Ravenstein! A voice said. Ridley recognised it instantly. Hello, Bites. Ridley said. Ridley had played cards with Bites a few times in the past, but he wasn't one of Ridley's cash machines. The shark-looking demon hadn't earned his name Bites by eating small meals. He wasn't someone you conned. Neither was his employer. Ooh. I was on my way to drawing the money out and was just about to make my merry way up here and settling my debt. Bites buried a fin-like fist into Ridley's stomach. 24 hours, Ridley. That's what we're giving you. I can't do it. I can't make the deadline. I can help. Chip stood from his sitting position. How? You're going to make lemonade? There's other ways. Banks, safes, anywhere with a lot of money in one place at a time. We hit them, and we get what you owe. No! Ridley shouted again. Chip reached out to put a hand on Ridley's shoulder. Ridley quickly mutated and grabbed Chip by the throat, throwing him backwards into the wall and landing on a bookcase, causing it to smash into a dozen or so pieces. By the time Chip came to, the apartment was empty. It was well past closing time, even for a demon bar. You know they're bad, because they <laughs> stay up late past their bedtime. Well, this would have been before your 24-hour licensing and stuff like that, mm. so probably around the time all the pubs closed at, like, 11. <laughs> I mean, currently, as where we are right now, all the pubs closed at 10, or yeah. are not open at all, because they've all gone out of business. Yay. Yay. That's I'm the sure podcast. the demon bars are fine, though. <laughs> Can demons get coronavirus? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Let's hope not. Or, well... No, in some cases, let's hope so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if Trump can get it, I guess anyone can. (laughs) It was well past closing time, even for a demon bar. Chip wasn't in the mood for set times, though. He kicked the front door on its handle, easily forcing it open. For fuck's sake, Chip, you're trying to be nice. (sighs) Is he going to go rob Mox? Was that the compromise lesson? Let's rob a bank. Let's go and rob the guy I beat up a few weeks back and whose establishment I still frequent. The lights were off inside and no one was around. The door closed behind Chip as he stepped inside. Mock appeared in the doorway of the office, brandishing shotgun. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't got several shotguns at this point. Just like, come on, motherfucker, just try it. A flamethrower, maybe. <laughs> Evening, Chip said. Any idea where... I should shoot you down! Mock interrupted. 
his hands shaking as he held the gun in a tight grip. But I'm going to give you the chance to get your ass out of here. I like how Chip kicks the door down <laughs> and is like, excuse me, sorry to bother you. <laughs> I know I viciously assault you before and you may think that because I'm breaking into your bar past <laughs> demon closing bar hours that you may be slightly agitated, but... I'm actually quite offended that you would think that of me. <laughs> I'm just trying to rob a bank, okay? <laughs> Chip stared at Mock for a while, watching his hands out of the corner of his eyes. Of his eyes? <laughs> out of the corner of his eyes. He has one corner for both eyes. Chip knew he would have time to make a dive behind the bar should Mock turn the gun on him, but it was just a bluff. He wasn't holding it as if he was going to shoot, and he wasn't about to intimidate Chip. So he's not holding it as if he's about to shoot, so like, upside down? (laughs) Is he holding it, like, by the barrel, pointing it towards his face, or...? I... I don't know. Maybe he hasn't got his hand on the trigger. Sure, okay. I guess I'm trying to say that he's just trying to scare Chip off, even though... I like my idea one. Yeah, more, more. so, yeah, yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. I have no excuse for what I did to you. And I'm not about to try and explain myself, but I... I need to find Ridley urgently. He was the reason I didn't kill you that night. That's not a good excuse, man. Come on. <laughs> he was the reason I didn't kill you that night. And if you don't tell me where I can find him, then I'll have the perfect excuse to pay you another visit. Wow, it sort of started off as an apology and then ended with a literal death threat. What is Chip... What is he going for? How does... What? Chip's apology, though. He's not very good at it, is he? Hey, look, uh, I just... I'm sorry, I was backing out. I accidentally bumped into your car. Get in contact with the insurance company. But if you make a claim, I will slit your throat. Last week, mm. we, we said about how it felt like the episode had been written by someone who'd never like read an episode before. Yeah. And it's continuing here. It's like somebody took over. There was a tag team. They sort of took over halfway through that dialogue, <laughs> or parag- that paragraph of dialogue. I'm really sorry, but I will kill you. Mock thought for a few seconds before lowering his gun. Jim, you realise at the same time he was pointing it towards himself. <laughs> I don't know where Ridley is. He hasn't been in tonight. There was a demon looking for him earlier. Philippe. Been in here a few times. Ridley won some money off him. You'll find Philippe in the basement... Of a tower block just off third. Is that a relation to a barman? <laughs> Do the basemen and barmen all get off together? <laughs> no, not like that. I'd say. <laughs> well, maybe. Chip turned on his heel and walked away. He didn't have time for pleasantries. No more death threats. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> oh, Chip, mate. You've gone from stalking to bank robbery to murder threats. <laughs> God, this is meant to be his redemption story. What the hell, man? Hey, he's not trying to end the world anymore. <laughs> he's the switch is to good, yeah. which makes all of this okay. <laughs> and um, Yeah, because Riddy uh, obviously attacked Chip through and through a bookcase at the end yeah. of the last episode. So I guess he's just kind of run off. Yeah. And Chip is still trying to find him, slash help him, slash commit a felony. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Hard eight. The dealer called out. The dice showed a four on each one. Some of the players scoffed whilst others collected their winnings. The dice were passed to the next thrower, and he rolled them in his hands, whispering sweet nothings to them as the other player laid down their bets. Ridley had played here before, but tonight he wasn't looking for a game. It was being held underneath a small restaurant. The owner enjoyed playing himself, and had set up the small storage space for a similar gambling events. It was a pretty hot ticket for the rollers of the city. So he's not looking for a game, but the game he isn't looking for is being held underneath a small restaurant. I I guess he's trying to find someone who's at the game, maybe. Or maybe he's going to steal the winnings or something like that. And I want to know if hard eight is actually like a (laughs) gambling term. I have no idea. I mean, if I don't know now, I definitely didn't know back then. Also, I really like the line, it was a pretty hot ticket for the rollers of the city. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's from some sort of um, 40s noir or something. Extra, extra, read all about it. Ridley spotted the man he wanted to talk to, Ralph. He was the owner of the restaurant above, and the man to talk to if you needed a few bucks to play. He was in his fifties and had a bit of weight on him. He was slightly below average height and had a full bearded moustache. Like Ridley, he was a New York boy through and through. Making his way through the yelling crowd, Ridley tapped Ralph on the shoulder when he got to him. Hey, Ralph, I... Just a second! <laughs> I like him. <laughs> we... <laughs> Last episode, we tried using the stage directions, the the accent yeah. uh, from the thing, and I think you're you're right on. Just ignore it entirely. <laughs> well, the thing is, is like, dear listeners, you may not know this about us, but we're not classically trained voice actors. So when someone is described as having a New York accent, 
we've only got one of those. <laughs> we don't know dialect of Brooklyn from Harlem. Like nothing. We don't know anything like that. So it's just really hard to keep doing a New York accent. Or That's true. We can't even do a New York accent. <laughs> so we're just going to mix this up a little bit, okay? Right on. Just a second. Ralph didn't even turn around as he watched the next roll of the dice. As they landed on a four and a two, Ralph pumped his hand in the air and gave a hearty Yes! Getting his winnings from another player who passed them over. He turned around. Ridley! Ralph said in a surprised voice. You're the last person I expected to see here! You sound like a character from a children's TV show or something. (laughs) (laughs) A little annoying puppet. Who runs a gambling (laughs) den under his restaurant. Hey kids, today I'm going to teach you how to play poker! Well, we know Ridley plays Snap, so <laughs> that must be where he's learned it. <laughs> yeah, well, I normally wouldn't, but I need a favour. Ralph looked at Ridley like he was crazy for a few moments before bursting out laughing. Ha <laughs> ha! A favour? You want me to do you a favour? And I'll pay you back straight away, man. Just need to get this heat off my back. Uh, so he's going to a loan uh, shark to pay off a loan shark. Good plan. So it's a vicious circle, Ridley. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, it's a money favour. Why didn't you say? Ralph reached into his pocket and pulled out a stack of fifties wrapped in an elastic band. He counted a few out before sliding the bundle back into his pocket. You're a joke, Ridley. Going from one lender to another. Do you know how much you still owe me? I shouldn't worry. Word has it, you're in trouble as it is. I'll do you a favour, Ridley. Get the hell out of this place. Because next time I see you... You're a dead man! I just realised the voice is like, um, thank you from Sonic High School. Uh, Charmy B? Oh, uh, no, no, Charmy B is the actor one, isn't he? Yeah. Cream? Cream, oh. yes! <gasps> is Ralph Cream? Oh my god. Oh my god. Is Tails gonna appear and fuck him? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did Tails fuck? Oh yeah, Tails did try and fuck Cream. Oh, oh I can't wait forget? to get back to Sonic High School. <laughs> yeah. Let's finish this up quick. <laughs> Ralph walked back to the action to take his turn throwing the dice. Ridley rubbed his forehead with his hand and almost felt himself change. But the repercussions from breaking up the game would almost be as bad as the trouble he was in now. Turning up the collar on his coat, Ridley backed away out of the crabs game. Crabs. Crabs. (laughs) (laughs) There's a bunch of crabs playing cards there. Come on, we've had octopus and shark last week, so a crab wouldn't be that far away, would it, to be honest? It's not good for Ridley, though, is it, going from one loan shark to the other? I know, I know. But it's, it's his way of life, I guess, you know. He just tries to keep his head above water. Yes. He's moving from one loan debt to the next. Exactly. And... It's just minute-to-minute survival, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. One thing I don't get about loan sharks, mm. figuratively and literal yeah. ones. Um, Are they actually sharks? <laughs> why is it that when someone owes them money, mm. if they don't pay up, they kill them? Because then you're never going to get the money. Like, Ralph is like, oh, I hear you're going to be a dead man soon anyway, so whatever. But doesn't he owe Ralph a load of money? I guess it's a sending a message to their other debtors, isn't it? But it never works, though, does it? That never works. Yeah. No one has ever seen someone in debt die and be like, well, I better pay my loan back straight away. I guess it's, well, it isn't about paying off the loan, is it? It's about perpetually paying them back, like interest back, you know, so they get a monthly income. So if you, if, if I <laughs> were to lend you £100, Ooh, yeah. and then uh-huh. if you I didn't like pay idea. me £10 every week, yeah. I would break your legs. <laughs> Yep. You never. I keep you in debt enough that you don't ever pay off that hundred pounds, so I keep getting that ten pounds every week. I'm really scared of you right now. Hey, do you want to borrow some uh, money? You want to rob a bank? <laughs> <laughs> Moving at a quick pace, Ridley almost flew out the door of the restaurant and started to walk down the street. He was breathing heavily as he tried to think. How could I get this far? He said to himself. The people he passed in the street gave him strange looks, but Ridley was too deep in thought to care. I had to know that my number would finally come up someday, but not so soon. Kicking a trash can on the street, Ridley slumped down on the stairs of a building, dropping his head into his hands. He sat quietly for about 20 minutes, trying to figure out what he would do. Running was out of the question. There was no doubt he'd be easily found. And there was definitely no way he could come up with that sort of money any time soon, no matter what Chip said. Then it hit him. Slowly, Ridley lifted his head and started to stand. This is my mess. No one else got me into this. I gotta face what's coming to me. I got a deal. Time for me to grow up, reap what I sow. <laughs> but so spell S-O. 
<laughs> also, his, his advice to Chip is about you have to deal. Mm. Now, his advice to himself is he has to deal. <sighs> well, it's hard to take your own advice, MC, but it's finally so Ridley's true. doing it. <laughs> Picking up a quick pace again, Ridley strolled down the street. So is he just going to go to bite to be like, you got me, man, this is it, this is over? Or is he going to fight him? Ooh. Mm. Mutated Ridley versus shark person. Mm. Hell yeah, I'll be there for that. <laughs> I mean, we already established that the shark hits people with his folded over <laughs> fist. Thin, not even fist, just thin. So, Oh, I want to put a bet on this fight now. <laughs> Where's a loan shark? I'll lend you the money if you need it. <laughs> trying to lend me money. <laughs> Mark's information as to where to find the demon had been correct. Chip had found it with relative ease. Sorry, relative ease, which always worried him. Nothing was easy in this life, or any other. And he knew that from first-hand experience. World-weary Chip. <laughs> so just being able to walk straight into a demon's lair meant something had to be wrong. Indeed, it was. The place was covered in brightly coloured demon body parts, and the walls had been splattered with blood. Chip could see all of this, and the room was still in darkness. There was a light switch by the stairs as he walked down. Flicking the switch revealed the true damage done to the demons. The grey carpet was soaked through with blood, furniture had been knocked down and smashed, and judging by the remains, there looked to have been five or six demons living here. A bumpy purple head rolled past Chip's feet as he stepped down the last two steps. Its eyes were bulging out of its sockets, and the head seemed to have been ripped straight off the demon's neck. Terrible thing! Bites said, <gasps> stepping out of the shadows at the back of the room, blood covering his mouth and teeth. Do you think you ripped those heads off with these fins? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. I still like to think he's got that bright yellow raincoat on as well. <laughs> it keeps the splashes of the blood oh, off. There we yeah, go. It's practical. But he just can't eat anymore, and I don't like to waste a free buffet. Who are you? Chip asked. <laughs> like, that's a fair reaction, I think. Like, <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> I was about to ask you the same thing. Look, I haven't got time to be messing around or get into another fight. I just came here to find out some information. Information regarding what? A friend. Uh Uh-huh. This friend wouldn't happen to go by the name Ridley now, would he? Chip glared at Bites for a second, and the shark-like creature stared back. How do you know Ridley? The ninja asked. He owes money to my employer. A lot, in fact. So you're the one who's been trying to collect... You're not just after money anymore, are you? Ridley had his time, and he didn't pay. Now he does. I can't let you do that. Heh, <laughs> you gotta stop me? You're just effeth, my friend. Bites laughed. I, oh, afters as in dessert. Yes. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Chip smiled and leapt forward, flicking out his leg and knocking Bites backwards, crashing him through a wooden shelf. Drink. <laughs> destroying the various items on its shelves. No, I like to think it's a bunch of those like uh, little um, porcelain ducks or like, <laughs> <laughs> like little, or those cute little Scotty dogs or a couple of doilies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what if there's any wooden safari animals on it? <gasps> Better pick those up. He was out cold after banging his head. He's a terrible shark. He's not very... <laughs> it's like the thing in the, the TV series where you have him intro as like a scary villain. He's surrounded by all these dead demons and then he trips over it <laughs> over some Lego and knocks himself out. Looking through a couple of drawers, Chip finally found what he was looking for. A roll of duct tape for the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a brand. Yeah, fair. I guess so. But, but look, I mean, I, you're just going with your sort of vaguely animal aquatic, yeah, just, animal theme. Everything that's animal related is actually an animal in this now, I've decided. <laughs> <laughs> Did Chip go to the demon's lair to get duct tape? He, he went to find Philippe, who was looking for Ridley. But it says Chip finally finally found what he was looking for, a roll of duct tape. Yeah, he, he was looking through a couple of drawers. So I feel like finally is maybe maybe the wrong word. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's, it, that's it was, why I got a bit confused. I was like, Mark, where do I find duct tape? <laughs> Tell me or I'll kill you. Chip just goes with his shopping list one day. <laughs> Mark, where do I find flour and eggs? If you don't tell me, I'll cut your head off. I need gluten-free stuff. Where's that? <laughs> They changed it around in the supermarket. I'm so confused. <laughs> Mark, help me. I won't kill you, I promise. Or I will. <laughs> Reaching underneath his bed in his small apartment, Ridley pulled out a small, dusty shoebox. After brushing off some of the dust, he pushed the lid off, letting it fall to the floor. 
on top of the various stuff inside were a couple of Polaroid pictures. Ridley glanced at them for a few moments. He put them down on the bed and searched through the box some more. He finally found what he was looking for and tucked it into the inside pocket of his jacket. Is it a gun? It might be a gun. <gasps> Mutated demon with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming. He said aloud, placing the pictures back into the box and placing it back carefully under his bed. I mean, it's got to be a gun, hasn't it? What else could it be? Yeah. Although, knowing this, it could be absolutely anything, <laughs> couldn't it? It's got to fit in with the aquatic animal theme. <laughs> oh, do you think I'm going to end up doing some sort of Jaws ending for bites or something? Oh! Like, was it Smile, you son of a bitch, or whatever the line is? Yeah, maybe. Bites came back to life with a shudder. Chip had brought him back, too, by soaking him in a bucket of the dead demon's blood. The shark demon licked his lips, savouring the taste. How did he get a bucket of the... Did he, like, mop up all the blood and then <laughs> squeeze it? <laughs> Just, it. I mean, I guess it, you know, sharks smell blood. So yeah, it's but, like smelling salts for shark, I guess. But how did he get the bucket full of blood? That's what I want to know. <laughs> oh, no, let's not ask Grim. him. <laughs> Also, I think I just remembered there actually was a shark demon in Buffy. Oh. So I don't think it was called Bites. I can't remember what his name was one actually, but um. Charm. Yeah, I think I, I think Spike owed him money or something. I oh, think that was the case. The the depth of your unoriginality <laughs> is just <laughs> breathtaking. I need to look that up to be sure, but I think that was the case. The shark demon licked his lips, savoring the taste. Now you're gonna talk. You're going to tell me who your employer is, where I can find him, and how I can kill him. Chip put his face close to Bites. I feel like that's a mistake. Yeah, Bites has, Bites has one weapon, yeah. and he, you, Chip has put his face next to it. It's fine, his fins are tied up. <laughs> He's not a threat anymore. Is that what he did? Did he just duct tape his fins to his body? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just like... <laughs> Be quick to judge, ain't you? Bites replied. How do you know he isn't human? Just a guy trying to make a buck or two. Ridley doesn't get his money from the bank for a very good reason. So that means the bloke you work for is either very generous or likes to play with dirty money. Now I don't care if he's human, demon or a bloody unicorn. He's not taking his money out of Ridley. You're a chip, right? The ninja. Chip nodded. I heard you were in town. You're quite famous, you know. Trying to end the world and all. But word has it, you laugh your great fruits. <laughs> I'm hoping Chip's lost his grapefruits. You better ask Mark where to find them. <laughs> Tell me where the citrus is or I'll kill you. Oh, boy. Oh, Bites, you don't get any scarier. But word has it, you laugh your grapefruits. Didn't have the nerve for the kill anymore. So you do what you want, Mr. Scary. I'm sure I won't be forced to talk if you're gonna tickle me to death. Don't, don't, don't say Mr. Scary if you're trying to prove how tough you are. Uh, don't tickle me to death. <laughs> Ship's gonna lift up his fin and just like, do 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 do. Don't stop that. I'm actually really ticklish. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, it's oh. hard to tickle someone when you've lost your grapefruits anyway. <laughs> I feel like Mr. Uh, the Mr. Bites, Bites has <laughs> Mr. like Bites. false teeth. That's going to be the, <laughs> <laughs> the final bit of his just of, of proof oh. that he doesn't have any grapefruits himself. <laughs> Chip walks behind Bites where the demon couldn't see him. He was gone for a few seconds before calling out, Don't believe everything you hear. The sound of a chainsaw being revved up filled the room. It was like MC with a chisel over again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, we, I mean, obviously, Chainsaw is kind of an Evil Dead reference. I think we used that a few times in the yeah, early, in the early episodes. Yeah, had He yes. had it um, on his arm stump. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good times. Mm. Chip brought the spinning blade slowly towards Bite's head. He tried to move away, but being tied to a chair didn't help much at all. Is this another thing Chip found in the drawer? The <laughs> duct tape and a chainsaw. <laughs> Just before the chainsaw ripped into Bite's flesh, he cried out, Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Everything I want to know? Chip moved the blade closer. Anything you want! Just before Bite's lost a few pounds of skin. That's a lot. Yep. Chip cut the chainsaw off and sat it next to the chair on the floor. A few pounds of skin. Oh, I was going to use it to replace the grapefruits, I guess. <laughs> when you're ready. Okay, okay. 
I walk for an entity that goes by the name of Dark Blue. It's not a man. It's not even a demon. Dark Blue is a separate entity. Like a god? Not quite, but pretty much. You want to take it on? By all means. But you can't kill it. It's been here as long as there's been water. It's where it lives, grows, exists, whatever. <laughs> really glad you picked that accent. Oh my god. Anyway, Dark Blue has always been in the business of taking advantage of people stupid enough to want its help. Currently, that be the money lending industry. It ain't corporeal. It needs heavies like me to run its money around. Why does the evil puddle want money? <laughs> it's not a puddle. Why do you think it's a puddle? There's a mention of water. It's by the dogs. It's going to be some sort of weird water spirit or something. God, these are the worst villains ever. <laughs> Bites and the puddle. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So, Dark Blue. So, terrible name anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's a money lending supernatural entity. Puddle. <laughs> puddle. <laughs> Evil puddle. Uh, has anything ever been described as being here longer than water? <laughs> As long as there's been water. Oh, oh, Which is why I, I think see. it's, it's ah, water. Ah, clever. Mm. <laughs> but it needs heavies like bites. They must be really struggling. <laughs> How does a not-of-this-world entity get its hands or whatever on hard cash? Chip asked. It's got followers. People, demons, etc. to do its bidding. It doesn't just lend people money. It curses them. Curses? I feel like Chip's mocking Bites there. <laughs> Bites is like, Kesses. And Chip's like, do we curses? <laughs> Bites went on to explain everything that Dark Blue could do, what it had done, where it would be, and most importantly, how it could be stopped. After Bites had finished talking, Chip paced the room for a bit, thinking, So, man, you got to let me live now, right? Why should I? Chip half said, still pondering what to do. Oh, give me a break. i got a family. They depend on me to feed them. Are we going to meet Bites's family? Oh, I really hope so. With little, little cute shark babies. <laughs> Do you think he lives next door to the giraffe demon? And it's just like a suburban like, sitcom or something. <laughs> I'll cut you a deal. Chip walked back towards the tied up Bites. You put your family on a human meat-free diet and avoid me at all costs. I'll let you keep those fins of yours. So he can keep on punching. His boxing career is not over yet. <laughs> Come on, Bites. Be heavyweight champion of the world one day. This is your thousands fight in a row that you've lost. <laughs> I think I accept those terms. Of course, if you break them. Chip quickly grabbed the chainsaw and revved it up once more, swinging it towards the chair. Bites closed his eyes in a fit of blind panic and waited for the impending decapitation. The room fell silent again and Bites opened his eyes. Chip threw, spelt incorrectly, the chainsaw down and left the room. Bites saw the duct tape that had once pinned him to the chair had now been ripped to shreds. It had been a matter of inches away from his body. So Chip trying to be all intimidating there, like cutting him free with a chainsaw. It's not hard to scare Bites. <laughs> he works for an evil puddle. <laughs> but uh, he just misunderstood in a way, like he's just doing it to feed his family. Like maybe it's hard for a shark demon to get a job. There's so much prejudice. He can't. There's so many jobs he can't do because of his fins. Oh, do you think he went for the job in Costa? Oh, oh no! no. They're like you can't operate a coffee machine with those fins, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did he make him like the shark demon equivalent of a vegan by making him not eat human meat? Well, no, he can still like cows and burgers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like the shark demon equivalent, though. No. Yeah. Because <laughs> he can still eat meat. The shark demon equivalent. No, because he can still. Shark demon. <laughs> oh god, let's move on quickly. The sea was calm tonight, and the small amount of breeze blown in from the coast was cold. Ridley had his jacket closed up tightly as he stood on the beach. Not far from where he was standing, just across the water, was the symbol which every New York native could relate it to, the Statue of Liberty. Oh god. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Ridley wasn't a proud American. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't give two hoots about dying for his country or protecting the so-called freedom for which it fought so many wars over. But he did love his city. The place he called home. His castle. Sure, it was dirty, it was crowded, and there were people who would step on you as soon as look at you. But he was also the place that had raised him into the man he was today. Albeit a mutant con man who was a sidekick to an evil fighting ninja, 
The wind level remained, but it was getting a little colder. Riddy clutched his hips from the inside of his pockets and pushed his face into the collar of his jacket. That's really confusing. <laughs> uh, no, because he's got his hands in the inside uh, the pockets of his jacket okay, and he's sure. pushed the coat towards his body by clutching his hips. And pushing his face into the collar. Yeah, like okay. when you tuck your chin down. Okay, sure, it's just a really sense. stupid way of writing that, that he tucked himself that into his sense. coat. Yeah. Okay. The waves in the sea were also starting to pick up, getting heavier and more aggressive. Really knew what was coming. Evil puddle. <laughs> Dark blue. Maybe it started off as a puddle, but became mm, that's true. the what is the ocean next to the east coast of America? Is it Pacific? Maybe. Yes. Let's just say all the oceans, and I'll put the right one in here. <laughs> Dark blue. The waves were now crashing onto the beach and onto the rocks. It looked a strange sight, what with the lack of wind, but Ridley knew what was coming. Yep, that's the second time we've said that. <laughs> the entity he had borrowed a lot of money from. The money had gone to fund in his apartment and was a big improvement over where he had been living before. <laughs> it's like a home improvement grant. <laughs> Dark Blue's like the local council. <laughs> oh, if you ever need to borrow money for this evil demonic entity, make sure it's for an important thing, like getting to a nicer area. Well, you know, I mean, there's a really nice coffee shop around the corner. The schools are better. Does Dark Blue also do like car finance, payday loans? <laughs> It's like a less evil Wonga. <laughs> As the waves started to get bigger and bigger, a shadow appeared over the water, heading towards the beach. It was coming at such an incredible pace, yet still the beach and the weather remained calm. It unsettled Redley a great deal. Within a flash, the sea was calm again, and the spirit-like form of dark blue was hovering above the water. It was around nine foot tall and wore a cow that covered its body. What? I think I mean I assume you you mean cloak. Yeah, not like a Batman cow. No, over its entire body. <laughs> it's just a big <laughs> Batman head. There's <laughs> a puddle hiding inside a Batman cow. Its translucent body danced around, never staying still in one spot, flashing from position to the next. From position to next. This didn't ease Ridley's nerves at all, but he let himself become loose, pulling one of his hands out of his coat pocket and putting his face away from the collar. He was cold but trying to stay too focused to notice it. If it is a gun, mm. I feel like this isn't going to do much. You can't shoot a puddle <laughs> with a Batman cow, <laughs> even if it is nine foot tall. Your time has come. Dark Blue commanded in a strangely wicked voice that was a cross between nails down a blackboard and Tom Waits with throat cancer. Okay. Jesus. I, I know. Ridley replied. Do you have your payment in full? I have something for you. Something other than money. Really? Dark Blue continued to flicker around. What be this? <laughs> what be this? <laughs> Look, Dude, he, you tried too hard. Come on. <laughs> He's made of water. It's hard to word, all right? <laughs> Ridley pulled a revolver out of his coat pocket and began to fire a Dark Blue, mutating slowly as he did so. Again, I feel like this is a very ill-thought-out plan. Yeah... You can't shoot water. The bullets went straight through Dark Blue's non-caporal body. It says caporal, <laughs> which is, we had that oh, before. Caporal. Hey. Oh, it's so good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you, buddy. <laughs> the bullets went straight through Dark Blue's non-caporal body and went out over the sea. When the barrel was empty, Ridley dropped the gun to the pebbly ground. Foolish. Dark Blue claimed. This is your effort of defence? Had to go down with a fight, where it was brought up. Now, do whatever it is you gotta do. Very well. Dark Blue cackled. So was that it? Was it just sort of Ridley like, well, might as well try shooting it and go out swinging sort of thing? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Okay. The entity's eyes started to flare up, a bright yellow colour at first, shining out like the biggest lighthouse. They turned into a dark orange before slowly changing into blood red. Dark blue almost had an evil smile across its face as it drew back, taking up the sea with it. Ridley closed his eyes as dark blue continued to draw back and saw the tidal wave that was building. He closed his eyes and said a few words for his family. Oh, we never really... Yeah. We don't know much about Ridley and his family. Mm. I did wonder when we when he pulled out the Polaroids out of the box earlier mm. if... It was gonna. We were gonna talk about what those what was on those pictures. Yeah, maybe you're just set planting seeds. Yeah, maybe I do like to plant a few seeds, yeah. MC. They don't always grow into the flowers I want them to grow into, but <laughs> more weeds. <laughs>
He closed his eyes and said a few words for his family. A thudding sound as something hit the pebbles in front of him. Pebbles. Pebbles. Pe- oh my god, pebbles. That's so cute. That's the cutest <laughs> word I've ever seen. Pebbles. <laughs> oh, great. A thudding sound as something hit the pebbles in front of him caused Ridley to open his eyes. It was a large sack full to the brim with green dollar bills. Debt repaid. Sorry, no, sorry. Deb Debipped. Deb Debipped. D E B P T. My God, it's gone beyond a debt, MC. <laughs> How many pebbles is that? <laughs> Debit repaid. Chip said, coming to stand beside Ridley. What? Dark Blue proclaimed. That's impossible. No. The tidal wave beneath him dropped, and his red eyes returned to their see-through state. It started to become much more ghost-like, thunder and lightning striking its form. It yelled out and screamed before disappearing from the beach completely. The thunder and lightning... Sorry, the thunder and lighting... (laughs) It's got like a disco ball or something, (laughs) some lights. The thunder and lighting went away, and the sea became calm. What? Ridley started to say... Happened... The sack on the beach had also gone. You seem to be cursed with bad luck, Chip said. You're telling me, Riddy replied, rubbing his face. And I mean, literally. Just how much did you borrow from this thing? Riddy thought for a few moments. A lot, but I can't actually think of the exact amount. It's a curse, Chip said. The money you took was cursed. There was no chance you'd ever be able to pay it back. Same with a lot of people. Oh, what happened to that big, gorgeous sack of cash? Only way to break the curse was to repay what you owed. Ridley was still staring at the dent in the sand where the bag had once been. That was a lot of moolah. And now it's gone. Just like the money you were living off. What are you going to do now? I got a few more people I can go see. Ridley looked at Chip. Why are you covered in bruises? I bumped into a few of those people. Ridley nodded. So what now? I don't know if I can go back to the 9 to 5. Clocking in and out of places. Maybe him and Bites can start a business together. I'm not sure what Costa would take him back anyway. <laughs> you had a job? Once, back when I was in my youth. There's definitely more to you than meets the eye. Chip turned away from the beach. Come on, I'll buy you a pint. Aren't you more broke than me? I acquired a little income. Just where did you get that money from? Ridley asked curiously. Oh, God, did he actually rob a bank? <laughs> did he actually go and rob a bank? Uh, maybe, oh, no. <laughs> Get those people back, Detective Jack Bentley yelled out. He hated people crowding around his crime scenes. Even worse, when ordinary folk were trying to get a gl- glimpse, glimpse of a dead body or a rape victim. Oh, God. Oh, my God, who goes and tries to get a glimpse of a rape victim? Jesus Christ. Fuck me. He often wondered what these people did after they had seen these incidents. Did they go to a local bar and tell all their drinking buddies, or talk in the playground as they picked their kids up? Tonight's incident wasn't so bad, but a crime nonetheless. No one had been badly hurt. The two drivers of the steel-plated van carrying a bank's takings hey. had careered into a lamppost whilst trying to avoid someone that had leapt out in front of them. They had suffered minor knocks and concussions. <laughs> minor knocks and concussions? <laughs> Bit of a discrepancy there between the two injuries. But even stranger was the fact only two sacks of money had been stolen Ooh. from the van. Oh, I wonder who did that. I mean, it was it's Chip. Bites. Yeah. <laughs> well, that vegan meat is expensive, isn't it, MC? <laughs> Detective, a young uniformed officer said, walking over to Bentley. I found a fingerprint on the side of the van. Sonic has apparently become a uniformed <laughs> officer in the New York Police Department. He showed detect. He showed detective Bentley. The mark he had taken. Also, I've started spelling Bentley wrong as well, missing out the E. <laughs> okay. If you tell anyone about this, I'll blend you in a room full of cocaine with a dead hooker. Understand? Oh my God. <laughs> what? what the shit? <laughs> Is he trying to apologise? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a sort of like, if you tell anyone about this, like I'll end your career. It's like, I'm going to put you in a room full of cocaine with a dead hooker. <gasps> Jesus Christ. The startled officer just nodded in an erratic manner. Now be it. Bentley walked down an alley near the crime scene and shone a torch on the print he had been given. Satisfied, he reached for his cell phone and pushed speed dial one. The most important speed dial. (laughs) 
It's me. Guess whose fingerprint I'm holding? The voice on the other end spoke. Bentley tucked the print in his pocket. That's right. Here's. And that's where we're going to end part two of Pool Shark. Well, what do we think of that episode, MC? Although it's confusing with it being called Paul Shark and there being bites because he was very much a secondary character even though he's in it a lot. Yeah, I think I just wanted to make that pun. And like, obviously Paul Shark has connotations of someone who plays Paul yeah, and hustles yeah, yeah, him, yeah. which I guess is Ridley. Yeah. It's a very tentative link, isn't it? It is a little bit. Yeah. Little bit. Maybe I was trying to go for that swerve. Like you think, oh, Bites is the main villain, but actually it's Deep Blue. Evil who's Puddle. This Poseidon type cow Puddle. thing. Yeah, Puddle. Yeah, it wasn't a very good episode. No, it was... It feels really short. Like, I haven't looked at the timings of the recordings and yeah. stuff, but they felt like both parts felt quite short. I, on the other hand, I just feel gratitude that it wasn't the previous one. You know, the, 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 the <laughs> nightclub yeah. with the stalking. This almost reads like I was worn out myself from writing that. Yeah. So I just had to write some sort of, like, really simple one-off episode. This is a lo- relatively light-hearted one. What with the threats yeah. and the chainsaw and... But you think it should be... I think I think there should be more importance on the fact that Ridley is a, thinks he's about to die, that he's, he's come up. And this whole idea that his entire loan life money thing mm. had been cursed. Mm. Uh, that feels like a bigger deal than it was kind of made out of. It was just... Everything in this episode seems so simplified. Yeah. Like, it was like, okay, Ridley needs money. He can't get money, so he thinks he's going to die. Chip needs to find Ridley. Oh, we found Bites who told him exactly how to stop deep blue yeah. so Chip went with his original idea of robbing, robbing it <laughs> yeah. uh, and that broke the curse and that I was, feel that like was just it that was just it I, I wonder if this is going to play out more in following episodes like with how Ridley's I mean he's talking about going straight yeah. not ripping off demons yeah I, again again, that feels like a big thing because everything that's been set up with Ridley so far has been he is a con man yeah. this is how he makes his living and now that's just suddenly going to change I don't know if it's just going to be that they set up a business together like Ridley now needs an income maybe I guess Chip's it, it seems like Chip took two sacks one for himself and yeah. one for Deep Blue so maybe he'll use that to set up a demon bar or something <laughs> He'll, he'll become a lone shark. <laughs> or Mark will just turn up at his demon bar and start trouble all the time. <laughs> now you know how it feels! <laughs> I think the biggest thing we can take from this, though, yeah. I mean, all apart from the stuff that should have been bigger, yeah. is the slight more introduction of Detective Jack Bentley. Yeah. Uh, who obviously now seems corrupt because yeah. he wants to frame an officer with yeah. a dead hooker and cocaine. Yeah. But he's called someone yeah on speed dial one mc and chip is clearly clearly on their radar yeah yeah so that's that's a thing this could be the big bad it could be maybe bentley is in league with the big bad maybe Mm. it's the pharmaceutical company or whatever it was that was trying to experiment with cat it's all connected mc it's all connected i can see (laughs) the strings um yeah but this kind of felt like a really padding episode yeah that should have dealt with things a bit better in yeah. my opinion yeah which is a shame oh well shall we see what next week's episode is called MC let's next week's episode is called Deep Pockets another money th- oh maybe it's a play on the, the fact they've got all the bags of money now and stuff yeah Wait, they, they never said how much money they've got bag of money <laughs> one sack of money how many pebbles is that <laughs> Well, if you've got any theories as to how many pebbles fit in a sack. <laughs> God, what am I even saying anymore? <laughs> what are these things that are coming out my mouth? God's sake. There's numerous ways in which you can get in touch. You can find us on... <coughs> you can find us on Facebook. We're at facebook.com slash howiriptoffpodcast. And we are, of course, on Twitter at howiriptoff. And you can find our entire back catalogue on SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, iTunes and YouTube. And if you've got the grapefruits... <laughs> Leave us a rating and review. <laughs> Leave as many stars as pebbles you can fit in a sack. I really did that, but I'm doing it again because I like it. 